Welcome to Lambs to Lions. You're listening to the weekly podcast with Pastor Matt Funk. All right, man. So let's pick this apart a little bit more. I'll go to my notes here. So first verse, okay? Luke 5, verse 1. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gesenerat, the people were crowded around him listening to the word of God. What have you been listening to? It's easy to just read over this first verse and miss the message. Before we can find the right way, we must listen to the right word. A lot of people miss their calling because they are too busy listening to the world instead of the word. You know how quick I, I, I just like, I've read the, over this and then the Lord just caused me to stop there. Like, I want to hear the rest of the story. I want to hear the exciting news. I want to hear about the catch. You know, I want to hear about the, the fish. I want to hear about how Jesus used a, a man like Simon before he was Peter, you know, and how he'll use anyone. But, but he's like, whoa, hang on. It all started with a message. It all started with Jesus giving a message. That's where it starts. His word, what are we listening to? So the message comes before the miracle. That's the first point. The message always comes before the miracle. Again, alignment comes before assignment. We must first be aligned with the right word before we can achieve the right way. Romans 10, 14 says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him, in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? It starts with the word. It starts with the word, man. In the workplace, it starts with the word. At home, it starts with the word. Are you with me? The foundation of everything we build must be built on the word of God or it won't stand. It's the word. But too many times we want to know what's the way, what's the catch, what's the catch? Hey, it starts with the word. It starts with the word. The calling must come from Christ. It starts with his word. It says there's two boats, but Jesus chose to step into Simon's boat. Remember, Simon remains Simon until he receives the revelation that Jesus is Lord. I wanted to give this teaching and call him Peter, but he's not Peter yet. He's still Simon. And we do the message a disservice if we start calling him Peter when God wants to tell us something about Simon's past. God wants to do something in your present, and yet too many times we're too busy looking at the future. We want to go to the next scene, Lord. I don't want to be in this scene right now. This scene seems like a lot of work. I'm not getting any results. I've been fishing all day, all night long, all night long. I've been in the dark. I'm not seeing the light. Lord, let's go to the next chapter. And he says, I'm not done with you in this season. I have more to do in this season. I want to do miracles if you listen to my message. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up on wings like eagles. But he's saying, hey, listen, be still and know I am God and I am doing something right now in you and with you and even in the workplace, even in the home. Yes, maybe I haven't changed your name just yet, but it's not ready yet. You're not ready yet. Step one, listen to my message. Watch me. So God will use your past to help you with your purpose. Just like God will use your boat to bring blessing. That's the next point. God will use your current career towards your bigger calling. Actually, I should correct. It's not bigger. It's just as big and just as important where you're at right now. God is going to use your career as your calling in the season in which you are in right now. You are in ministry right now. It's not a stepping stone. He's using you right now. He wants to catch fish with you right now. Even if it's just to feed the people right now. 
even if it's just to prove a point right now. But we can't jump into the next chapter without, first of all, the message, without, first of all, the hard work, without, first of all, being in our career and being open to what God wants to do in our career is part of the calling. Someone say right now. Oh, you got your right now revelation. It wouldn't be the last time either that Jesus would use boats. And Jesus would use the skills of the sailors to row out to storms and even walk on water through the storm. We jump ahead to the leaving everything behind part, but we forget that God will continue to use, use those skills through the man in which he has called to do his works and his ministry. Am I reaching you this morning? Okay, good. He would use the skills of the fishermen to feed others. Just like he would use the skills of a tax collector to collect men and to manage money. Sometimes we forget that God will use the skills of the natural to impart his supernatural. Pretty quiet up in here. Are you with me? Okay, good. So what skill do you need to submit to God's will? Come on, we all got it. And we're like, well, I'm just throwing, I'm casting out empty nets, pastor. Well, maybe he wants to use that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have been doing it the right way, but you haven't been listening to the way. They've been, they, were catch, they were casting out nets all night long. They weren't doing anything wrong. It wasn't until the way stepped in, and good thing they had the skill, and God could use that skill for his will. That's all that changes. That's all that shifts, is a matter of perspective, is a matter of not just catching fish for myself, but catching fish for others. Who are we doing it for? If you're just doing it for yourself, you know it's pretty depressing. When you realize that what you do has significant impact, not just internally, but eternally, on the kingdom of God, and it starts right here. In verse 4, it says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let your, and let your nets down for a catch. Let down your nets for a catch. Go out deep, let the nets down. Go out deep, let the nets down. Let's start with when he had finished speaking. We're usually too busy thinking again about the next step and the next move before we can finish or before God can finish his message. Isn't that true? God starts giving you a part of the vision. You're like, all right, I'm going, Lord. And he's like, oh, hang on, hang on. I wasn't finished speaking yet. So when he had finished speaking, he had finished the message. Okay, now you ready? I don't know how many people I've coached and discipled that like, man, they just get a glimpse, they get a taste, and they just want to run away. Okay, thanks, pastor. Thanks for, I, I'm, I'm done with you now. You know, like, whoa, what about discipleship? No, I got this. All I need is Jesus, right? How many times do you coach and mentor and disciple? They're like, oh, I don't need others. I just need Jesus. Thank you for showing me Jesus. I'm out of here. But that's not the way God set it up. Fivefold ministry. Where's your pastor? Where's your teacher? Where's your evangelist? Who are you getting under? What, what, who are you... Who, what tribe has he put you in so that you can thrive and not just survive? No, but I got my plans, God. You know, the church is just something that I do on Sunday. You know, I come in and I check that box off and, and I show up and I keep that seat warm and I pay my tithe. And it's like, no, no. I want to use your skills. I want to use, when you go back into the workplace, I want you to disciple and become fishers of men. But how many times is God speaking? We're just not always listening right now where we're at. Right now, just listen. My boys never do this, but sometimes I give them instructions. And halfway through instruction, they're running out the door. Hey, Aiden. And they're like, I know, Dad. I know. I know. I know. And then I, I hadn't finished telling him where the other parts of the tools are so he can do the job. So guess what? Five, ten minutes comes by. He's like, hey, I need this tool. Exactly. I was in the middle of telling you what you need You could have saved yourself. No, that never happens, eh, Aiden? How many times does that happen for us? God's not finished speaking yet. He hasn't finished his message. We can't even sit. Sometimes there's people that can't even sit through a whole church service. One hour, start to finish, and they got to get up and run out the door, and they're missing the best part, salvation and baptism. Ho! 
And then guess what? A lifetime of discipleship. Right? Are you with me? But it happens in the workplace too. It's like, oh, five o'clock, I got to get out of here. I got stuff to do. And there's people literally in your workplace that are waiting. They've been watching you all the day, uh, all day long. Now they're waiting. They've been watching you and they saw that you were happy. They saw that, yeah, you made mistakes, but you humbled yourself and, and you're discipling them indirectly and they want to go deeper. They want to go into deep waters, but you just want to stay shallow where it's safe and run out the door. I'm, like, I'm not done yet. That's why I love about this church, even after, after service, our mo- most discipleship, most ministry time, like the real, when they start to really eat and chew, is after the message. You guys are the message. When you stick around, and the, new, new believers, new people at church, they're the last to leave. Why is that? How come our fathers aren't the last to leave? How come the children are sticking around and they're waiting to be fed more and get into discipleship and all the dads are taken off? I'm just saying, that's what happens. We're not finished. God's not done yet. Same at home. He's not done with you when you're at home and you want to run out the door and you got this next task to do. And he's like, hey, your wife needs you right now. Just, just give her. It's not always about the amount of time. It's about the quality of time. Your kids need you right now. Oh, but Lord, I got this big ministry and work to do. I know you have responsibilities to do. But don't forget the responsibility of your home and your heart and the, then the, and the workplace and his church. His church doesn't come last, by the way. I'm not saying I'm in the right order. But are you with me? Okay, even if I'm just talking to myself in the mirror, I'm like, I'm feeling it. See, God must first instruct before we can conduct our calling. He must instruct. We must get instructions, and you're like, well, I haven't heard from the Lord. Open up your word. Everything that is read is directly out of the mouth of Jesus. If you're having a hard time, sorry if I'm coming across bold today, man, but I just came back from a conference, and I saw some stuff. I witnessed some things, and I know that God is calling us to go to deeper waters. And it's not just in the church on Sunday. It's in the workplace. It's in our homes. He's calling us to go deep. He's calling us to go back out. When you're tired and you're exhausted and you're ready to be done, well, okay, Lord, if, but because you say it, even though I feel this way, thank God, I'm not what I feel. I'm who you say I am. So I'm going out in the deep waters and I'll cast it out again. I'll use the same tools, the same nets that I had ready to just uh, give up on. And throw in the towel to use to go out there to do your work and your will instead of my work and my will. So we must first receive the message before we can make moves. I want to encourage you, man, though. You're in the right place. It starts in, in how we show up even today. Hey, guess what? Today is a new day. Today is the day the Lord has made. His mercies are made new every morning. And great is his faithfulness. Right? And, I, I, and that doesn't get tiring for me, saying it to myself every morning when I wake up. Oh, Matt, what day is it? Oh, yeah, it's the day the Lord has made. What am I going to do about it? Rejoice and be glad in it. Right? You got to wake up on purpose for a purpose, because there's a lot of mornings you wake up, and you don't feel like it's the day the Lord has made, so you go by faith and not by feelings, and you go to the Word, and you declare his Word over your day. Don't declare your feelings over your future. That's not going to get you really far. Because our feelings are up and down and this way and that way. And some days they're great, most days they're not. I'm led by faith and not by sight. So I declare it. I declare the message from my Messiah. I declare it. I declare the words that were written through uh, through the prophets. I declare it. Today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Guess what? Today is the hour. If the first hour didn't go so great, today is the day. It's the whole day. It's not just the morning day. It's not just the afternoon part of the day. It's not just, no, it's the whole day. So if you realize and you had that revelation, which I've had a lot of times, you just got to wake up. Don't get bitter, get better. Don't let the enemy pull you down when God wants to lift you up. 
You know, James, James does, yes, for some of us, it's a natural, it seems to be a natural gift of encouragement, but did you know we're all called to encourage? 1 Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage and build each other up. It's not just for, oh, well, James has that gift, so I'm going to leave it to James to be the one that encourages when, when someone comes in in the room. And you don't have to wait for someone to, to be discouraged to encourage them. That's ridiculous. That's like we talked about two weeks ago, waiting to drink water when you're thirsty, because apparently by then you're already dehydrated. And what you're doing by not encouraging others is you're dehydrating not just your destiny, but theirs. Because you're like, I'm going to use God's word when it feels like it, when the storms come. No, no, no. All the time. Never cease praying. I might not be praying all the time verbally out loud, but don't stop that dialogue. Because as soon as you start the dialogue, you get disconnected. You get discouraged. You get divided, right? Keep the dialogue going. Are you getting the message? Okay, good. A lot of stuff not in my notes. Then he says, put into deep water, let down your nets. Go into the deep water, let down your nets, your skill, your ability, the things that God has given you in your home. Let them down. Go deep, let them down. Use them. Use even what the enemy meant for evil. Use it for good. All I got is a bunch of empty nets. All I got is a bunch of empty jars. Use them so God could pour his anointing and his oil in it and through it. Even the oil was for the people. The fish were for the people. Use it. But they're just empty. Or I have, like the woman said, I have nothing but some bicycles, a motorcycle, a gym, <laughs> right? Tools for carpentry. Use your tools. Go deep, let them down. Are you ready to go deeper? Okay, good. Are you willing to let down your nets and your supplies? All right. If you want to see a bigger calling in the midst of your current career, you need to be willing to go deeper with Christ in your career you'll find your calling. You need to lay down your career for his calling. Remember, Jesus didn't call Simon out of the boat until he was willing to use what he already had to go into deeper waters. You want to get out of the boat? You want to leave it all behind? But Jesus didn't call him to do that until he was willing to use what he already had and go deep. Oh, I feel like a bomb just went off here. Well, yeah, I'll give all this stuff up. I'll give up my, my debt. I'll give up uh, uh, all those things I don't like that's just taking up space and leave it behind and follow Jesus. That's not what he's saying right now. He's saying, will you use what you have? Will you go deep with what I've given you? Will you use the skills, the giftings, and the abilities and lay them down for me? Then, after, guess what? <laughs> you'll do it once you get real, and you'll get blessed. You'll get blessed with so much fish that you can't contain it. Your business will be blessed. Your home will be blessed. And then he will say, now leave that behind and follow me. But, but Lord, you gave me all this. All this came from you. Yes, but I got more for you. Leave it behind. I'm going to use that skill, that gifting and ability, but there will come a time, and you'll know it, and it's usually when, it's not when things are going bad. It's usually when things are going really good. Things were going really good for us when we planted the church in Okotoks. Really good. It was in the season where I was finally like, ah, oh, I just give it to you, God. And I'll tell you this. It's not that everything was, was great. It's not that I always agreed with everything. But I came under the authority in which I was under, and I laid it to God, and I said, God, these are my tools. I will serve you. I will honor you, uh, even when I don't always understand or agree. And then I had this peace that came upon me. And the Lord blessed the church like crazy and never before. And then he says, now leave it behind. Just when I was getting comfortable. Just when it all, and he blessed us and blessed us and blessed, and guess what? He's blessed us more. But we, we want to skip chapters. We want to move to the next chapter. I lost my notes. Where am I? Again, some of us would like a different career, but before that happens, Jesus wants us to see your faithfulness towards 
his calling. There are men in the workplace that need Christ's message, as I said before. They are waiting for a catch, and they are looking for their calling. When you go deep, when we go deeper in our relationship with Christ and with others, we start to go deeper towards the catch. When we go deeper with him and deeper with others, we go deeper. You remember, he had to take his men with him in the boat. He didn't go alone. And they had to go deeper. He was, Simon was already in a position of influence. Simon and his men, not Simon alone. Oh, ho, ho, ho. What, I can't just leave everybody behind and go? No. Were you discipling? Simon and his men went deeper with their skills. And when they went deep, because of the call, Jesus called them out again, but this time he says, get out of the shallow waters and go deeper. But we've been fishing, but Lord, then Jesus. Then Jesus steps in and he says, okay, no, I'm not calling you out of the workplace just yet. Oh, this is heavy for somebody here. I can feel it. I'm not calling you out of the workplace just yet. This is your calling. How many of us could testify that we felt the need and and God gave us a vision for something bigger, but he said, not yet. Not yet. Justin's waiting for you. Not yet. Not not yet. There's, There's people in the boat that need you and they need me. And you've been discipling them. But I'm not just going to call you out of the boat. I'm going to call the, some of those people with you that you've been ministering to because you were never designed to do it alone. And some of them are in the workplace right now. They just haven't met Jesus yet. And so we tend to stay in the shallow and play it safe, but we miss what God wants to do in the deep. I don't know what, what your shallow looks like or what your play it safe looks like, but I think you do. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Again, the message before the miracle, the call before the catch. Have you ever been so exhausted at the end of the workday, you feel like you have nothing left to give Christ or the church? Coach DJ, you ever been so exhausted at the end of a workday that you're like, oh, I get to go to youth right now. Oh, I get to go do media and production and sound. Oh, I get to worship with my worship team. You know, let's be honest. There's, there's times at the end of the workday, you feel like, I did, I was out there. Lord, you, you want me to go deeper? You want me to go deeper, but I'm exhausted. I've been going all night. I traveled all day yesterday with Pastor Rudy, and I didn't sleep much last night. I was at a conference, a victory conference. I even spoke at the victory conference. You want me to do the thing with the men again? You want me to wake up at quarter to 4 a.m. and get into your word? <laughs> we all have feelings. He's like, I sure do. I want you to go out. I want you to go deeper. Go deeper. Don't go back and do the same thing you've always done before. Go deeper. Go deeper with those men. Call them out. Tell them that they need to go deeper too. You're not just going deep. They're all going deep. And they're all going to have a big catch and a big blessing. So big, so big of a blessing, they can't contain it. It's going to tear the nets. So just when you think you are done is when God will call you to go deep. Oh, and I haven't put my name on that, but all the glory to the Holy Spirit. He gave it to me. Praise Jesus. Just when you think you are done, God will call you to go deep. Think of something right now. You feel like, I'm done. I mean, if it's sin, you're you're done with sin, obviously. You know what I mean? In context to your current calling in your career. Just maybe God wants you to go out one more time. But this time, go deep. Before you leave, go deep. Before you bail out, go deep. So just when you think you are done with your career, God will use it to further your calling. Point three, at the end of you is the beginning of him. You probably filled that one in already, but it just looks a little different in this season, doesn't it? God will use your boat to bring blessing. God will use your catch to feed feed your calling. 
The fish were always for the people. So let's not get so caught up in the career that we miss our calling. When you feel tired, worn out, even burnt out, turn from your ways of doing it to God's way. If you are willing to still go out, go even deeper and let your nets down according to Christ's call, you will receive the catch. The catch will take you from your, it will, it will take care of your physical needs as well as your spiritual needs. We work for God's will and we must be willing to do it God's way. In Colossians 3, 23 to 24 says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as if you were working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Verses 10 and 11. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. There it is. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up to the shore, left everything and followed him. Oh, there's so much here, man. I I want you to go deeper in, in this. There's so much more here. We could go all day. Remember what happened just before that? He humbled himself and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I am not. We have to come to a place of humility before honor. We have to come to a place of repentance before we get the revelation to move forward. And that's every day. Every day we're taught to pray the Lord's Prayer. But we think we got this, and that's where pride steps in. But that boat was never yours. That boat was always for him. You with me? Those people were never yours. Those people were always for him. You're his child. He is the father. And everyone else is his children. And we're called to love one another. The takeaway is people are the catch to your calling. That's probably the hardest one, is the people are the catch. I'm going to talk about it more today, and please pray for me uh, for the message today, but it, it really it comes down to the people. The fish were always for the people. The fish were to feed the people. It wasn't just for Simon and, and his family. It was for the people. Wait, what's the catch? We're going to, oh, I get to do my calling. What's the catch? People. Oh, are they going to be all amazing and everyone's going to be so friendly and they're just going to love me and love your word? Nope. <laughs> Actually, but you know what? Some of the hardest catches are the ones that are, are really worth it. Hey, that's why I put that picture of that big fish on there. They don't always come in easy, do they? They come with struggle. But they're worth it because you're worth it. Derek's worth it. Cyrus is worth it. You guys are all worth it. You're all worth the struggle. If we remember that we're all in the same boat, this might look a little different when you go to the workplace, but in the end, we're in the same boat. We're all part of God's family. It's his boat. Some days we might even feel shipwrecked, but we're still saved. Because that's actually the place to be. At the end of you is the beginning of him. If you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for his sake, it'll be saved. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word today. Holy Spirit, thank you for giving us clarity through your word. Revelation, that it speaks revelation to to our hearts and, and, and in our season and the season that's to come. Thank you for the setup. Thank you for calling us now to go deep. Thank you, God, for, the, for the, the people. Thank you for the fish. Thank you for the people. Thank you for that we get to do this together. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Father God, that we get to go deep. And Lord, I pray that your faith would overcome our fear when it's time to go deep. That your faith would overcome our fear when we get that revelation and we get to see you face to face in the day to day through the eyes of other people. When we feel that we're not good enough or we don't measure... Uh, uh, to what you've called us to, that you look us straight in the eyes and tell us not to fear, for you are near. Just bless these men. Give them boldness, I pray. I pray not for safety. I pray for boldness. I pray for boldness as they they step out, they go back into the workplace. I pray for boldness as they step up today, as we go out and we, we fish for men today. That as we step out of these seats, that we're, we're still in your boat but you'd show us how to go deeper in relationship today. Stay, even if it's staying a little longer after service, even if it's, if it's going deep in the morning and casting out our nets before people come in. 
We want to go deeper for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in today, and thank you for continuing to partner with us and for giving so generously to this ministry. If you would like to find out more about how you can partner with us, visit our website at www.wherepeoplematter.church and click the giving link. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. See you next time.